Do you know when you see a styleful freeride skier, it just looks effortless, but how do they do it? That is what we're gonna look into this video. Some tips you're gonna get is like how to think about choosing a line, when should you do big turns versus small turns, and much, much more. Let's hit it. We're out here in Locks today and we're gonna look into five tips on how to ski powder with more style. Whenever you're out skiing the powder, I suggest you should always wear a transceiver, probe and shovel and know how to use it. So do an avalanche course, will you? Face shots! Woo! Get yeah, face shots. There's a couple of ways you can do this and the key ingredient in both are usually speed. If you have a good amount of speed, I like to basically push down with the snow, hover up to the top, and then just a nice big old speed check. And if you continue it for a little bit, and then stop, then you have this cloud in front of you, and you can just ski through it out, and you'll be riding out like a bows. Baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> and the face shot. It's a key technique if you're ever out with a photographer. You know, that's what they do all day, basically, when you're out skiing with a photographer. One turn, poof, one turn, poof. It works. It gets good photos like this. There's a little bit of technique going into getting that face shot that's often good for photos and video. What you need first is a lot of speed. Second ingredient, you don't even need that much snow, but you need some snow. And then third, we gotta put this together. How I like to do it, make a little gentle turn before, and then as you go in for the spray turn, I bounce up on the surface of the snow, let the skis really dig in, and I aggressively engage those edges. Try to like kick that snow in front of you, creating that nice cloud of snow, and then you unedge the skis, pop up the surface, and blast through your own cloud of snow. Mm, it feels good. Second thing to do to ski powder with more style is to think about where you draw the tracks down the mountain. Think that you're an artist, like where would it look good to put the lines? It's often quite obvious when you think about it. For example, here we can drop in from the top where there's no trees, go through like two pillows, and you can put some beautiful turns like on either the left hand side of this rock part, uh, part in the middle or on the right. It could also look pretty nice. Now when I'm standing at the bottom, I can look for different landmarks. I have a big tree there that I definitely can see from the top. And if I would go straight from the top towards that tree, I could smash through those pillows and drops in the middle and it'd be quite an exciting time. <laughs> There's two major ways I think about this. The first one is sort of micro, where you have a smaller face or a part of it, like where you want to turn around that rock, around those trees, etc. This is the only way I really ski. The second way is macro. Think you are like one of the most badass freeriders in the world. You have a whole mountain, you look at this big thing. Where do you want to draw your pencil strokes of ski tracks down it? So have that in mind. The third tip to ski with more style is to learn when small turns look good and when big turns look good. So this ties in with the last point actually. If you have a big face, big mountain, a big turn looks much better down it because it gets more proportional and cool in a way. While if you have a shoot, for example, shorter turns are more suitable. 
But here in Europe, I do love it that people often do very short turns, linking them just next to each other down big wide slopes. It's very considerate. So if you're into that, you can keep doing it. I don't mind, but it's not the most styleful. Stylish. To give you some more style when you're skiing the powder, you need to have some flow. There's a couple of things you can have in mind here. First thing is just have some nice pole plants. It adds rhythm, which has to do with flow. First of all, arms forwards and out. And if you do shallow turn in deep snow to continue like to keep the speed, you can pole plant quite a lot in front of you. But if you want to close the turns or it's steeper, I could recommend planting more downhill of yourself. It's also going to help project the upper body down, helping you get efficient turns. Avoid stop and go. Scout lines carefully so you have it in mind and you know where you want to ski. So you can do it in one continuous motion, just curve, 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 drop, curve. Just like that. <laughs> Last and the third thing is Avoid like side slipping too much. Try to do nice turns at all times. Side slipping isn't really skiing. So that's how you can improve your flow. Last tip for style today is whenever you do a jump or a nice drop in the powder, make sure that you land, stomp it, and let that speed increase some before you start turning and reducing the speed basically. In the best of all worlds, after a nice big drop or jump into powder, you should land in a perfect skier's position with a quick absorption like this. Bam! Often referred to stomping it. But chances are you may land a little bit back seated every now and then, so then this is important. Let's say I've landed back seated. Now continue down the fall line for a little bit as you get control of your position and then you try to control your speed by making some turns. Because if you try to shave off some speed while you're still back seated, chances are you are gonna crash. <laughs> so drop, land, and then you speed up before you slow down. If you learned anything from this video, give it a little like, maybe write a comment. What is your favorite advice in skiing powder? Perhaps I am going to start making some free ride camps in collaboration with red mountain guides and instructors. Is that something you'd like me to do? Definitely write a comment below or check out the link in the description and add your email address there. Anyway, see you in the next video. Ciao.